so how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, yeah, I'm well. I hear you were just in for a couple of days just sort of having chats with people and stuff, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, just basically 48 hours. Wow. Cool. Where have you flown in from? Have you been, like, in Europe otherwise? Or you just I live in Berlin yeah. most of the time. Cool. Yeah. So that's not too bad, is it? My mop. It doesn't matter. I was just outside just looking stupid on TV. Here we go. <laughs> It's, it's the way we roll. I almost feel like we could do that classic sort of TV show thing and hold the the album cover up. But I think, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's 3D, isn't it? Yes, it is a, a sort of pseudo 3D that I created. In, in what way pseudo 3D? Like, is it because just... it doesn't really have the effect. Um, I basically used, you know, the old school offset red blue. Oh yeah. yeah like yeah. the pink kind of thing. Oh, I, I kind of decided to do that. Oh, cool. it, it looks very fetching. I mean, and, and what what? What do you? What do you? What's your take on? Uh, Using an iconic image, of course, there are no photographs or paintings, actual paintings of Christ. But yeah. well, I, my, my take personally on using an image of Jesus on a cover is one of uh, well, it's a couple of things. One, confidence, I guess, in, in your thought and your your choice of well, subject matter. To the words. Who, well, so so you're saying Jesus killed Sergeant Pepper? No, I'm just being silly. <laughs> You know, I see. I think it's really ridiculous. I, I I love it. I think you know it's completely irreverent, and it you know I think it backs up with some of the titles as well, isn't it? Name of our band. You know, well that itself was a reaction, wasn't it, against short bands? You know, short band titles. There was that, but um, originally I I noticed the whole cult thing with rock music. Do you know? And that was a cult, and the and the way that. Jim Jones was very much a rock star with the dark glasses and the ranting and the rave and the music. He has records, mm. which is really weird stuff. Uh, but a lot of people took offense, yeah. basically banned from the business uh, very early on, from the very beginning. We made the we made the NBC our first concert. We made the NBC nightly news. Seriously, across America, network TV, prime time, and uh, current affair. There used to be the, like the Jeremy Tile. Kyle type show, <laughs> yeah. they were just like oh, immediately the LSD um, has raised its ugly head in youth culture again. Back in San Francisco, have our logo on the TV it was nuts. Um, and what do you think? You know, how did that attention spread like that way? Has it been something that you've always been? I mean, obviously you guys have been very vocal about your your activities and stuff, but do you feel like it was other people latching onto it as much as anything? Or? Are you talking specifically about what I just mentioned? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was a reaction to our first concert. We put up posters in the city that just said, take acid now. Like, <laughs> giant posters everywhere. And then we, the next week, we'd put up ones with plastic baggies with the little squares of colored paper mm. and put it up everywhere. And then we put up posters, like, a few days later, everywhere. Like, handbills. Every single pole in the whole city. Every, a, a big, large photocopy posters. This is like in 1990 yeah, yeah. that said, take acid now and come see the Brian Jonestown Massacre on Friday. And they were like, they didn't get... Did people follow your advice? Or, uh... Well, the issue wasn't really to take acid. It was like so ridiculous. Yeah, of course. But did anyone? Or... I, I, I'm sure people... It was really big in San Francisco again at yeah. that time. Uh, the, the, re- the reason I'm curious as well is like um, this record is sort of relevantly as well. Like I mean, the last year or so, you, you've been sober as well, haven't you? As well. And yeah, I did stop. Yeah, and, and how, how? I mean, I don't have any drug drug taboos, basically. But I stopped drinking, you know. Mm. And I'm not a person that smokes pause or schedule a drugs every day to get away or something. Or pharmaceuticals, a prescription for anything. I'm, I don't need that. Mm. It was something that you know. It was as much as an experimental thing for for art and creation. Well, Kind of, yeah. you know, the, the culture that I grew up in California. Like, people don't realize that I had more access to drugs than Oasis did at a concert uh, for, in the schools there. Mm. You know, drugs, like, for instance, I was telling somebody today, you know, I had, early on in the band, I broke my arm, compound fracture, it went right through. You go to the hospital, you have surgery, and they give you a script to go buy pills or something. You go to a pharmacy, they say, we're going to fill this prescription, come back in 45 minutes. It would take you less than five minutes to call somebody. Like, you could text a friend and say, do you know anybody that has Vicodin painkillers? They'd say, no problem. Call this number, delivery service. You would have it in 15 minutes right there. Wow. Quicker than you could actually, in California, even quicker, you know, in, in Hollywood or something, quicker than you could ever, mm. even physically, even if the doctor was in the, the pharmacy, you would get the drugs quicker. And what, what was the mentality? You say you grew up with all that. Was it just that sort of exposure and actually happens and that curiosity? Or was it, you know, like, was it like kind of a, you know, we're going to see what we learn from this, you know, like see what mind enhancement can occur, you know? Well, 
Well, I was in, 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 influenced by 60s culture and even before that books, you know, Brave New World and whatever yeah. and the, the Carlos Castaneda stuff and, and the, the idea of that, you know, Terrence McKenna, then later on you learn more about people being a, a psychonaut, so, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Then you get caught up in other things, you know. Yeah. Like it's just, they're very dangerous stuff. They're not toys. Yeah. Uh, and how do you feel like, you know, like a, a, I guess like a kind of more sober, for want of a better word, headspace has affected the new material, the music? Has it like kind of given you a new perspective? Or? Well, to a certain extent, you know, like psychedelic consciousness from fooling around with that kind of stuff, that, that permanently changes your perspective when you have that to think about, you know, um, from what I know. And some people that are predisposed to like mental illness that aggravates it. I, my, my experience is drugs and alcohol tend to amplify how, wherever you're at, anyways. You know, uh, once for me, um, it, I made a part of this record completely stone so uh, stone <laughs> stone stone, <laughs> stone cold sober, and the other part of it, you know, we were we were masked on E or something or like. Is it hard to play your instruments? <laughs> I, I just not for me. I get really weird. Like I'm one of the only people I know that will fight on it. Mm, so you fight through to get to the coherence of. Well, no. I mean, like I will fight. Oh right, you just yeah, fight. Like, every, you know, like oh my god, he almost beat the hell out of that guy. He's on. Like, How do you do that? He's not trying to hug him. You know, it, it, it really. So I just love the way that I totally misconstrued what you meant. Like that was awesome. Some people are like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I get really weird. Like. <laughs> no, seriously, if I was on, you know, like... Is it quite scary to be around? For me, you? I'm a really intense person, and I think mm. that it's, it is very scary. It is a shamanistic thing. But I, I know it's a really... I mean, that is an interesting point, the shamanistic aspect. I mean, what what's the weirdest, darkest sort of thing that you've... Blacker than a black woman's darkest fear. <laughs> like that? Yeah, no, along those lines. No, what, what's kind of like been your most surreal moment where you felt maybe I've gone too far, maybe this is just too much, I'm out of my depth? Because that must have happened. While drugging or something? Yeah. Well, I remember one time I w- uh, was sitting high and I literally pulled a piece of paper out of my pocket and I wrote, started to write a will <laughs> to my son like to make sure in my pocket that it said, you know, that... He, the rest of my stash. You know, no, 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 He no. owns all my copyrights. Oh, right, yeah. That I was that that blasted. Wow. Yeah, I have some very rich friends, you know, and I had a friend that lived here for one year in, Wait, in the Columbia, here, yeah. in, the, in the most expensive suite here in this hotel. Cash lived here for one year, renting it, doing drugs, wow. right, the next above here. That kind of money, mm. you know. Mm. That's crazy. It's amazing how like a billionaire, yeah. you know, just living like fuck it. I'm just smoking coke upstairs, just wild people, you know. I, Thank God I was never really into uppers that much. I only used them basically very socially. The tiniest little bump if somebody was doing it, you know? I've never been a person to, like, go out and buy it yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I, when you look... Well, I don't, the one thing I would like to make clear is um, I don't have a problem being honest about my process and my experience. No, no, in my life. I appreciate it. Um, I don't want it to be a commercial for drug use or a sobriety either. I just, uh, it's, I think it's really difficult for people to, to, they get way out of their depth very quickly with that stuff, especially young people. And now it's so crazy, all the designer stuff, being able to, do, before they just banned the meth, methadone. Oh yeah, I was about to mention methadone because obviously you have a record called that. So it's, well, yeah, mine came first. So oh, that's what I mean. I like have a drug named after my record. Yeah, how I mean, how do you feel being so synonymous with that sort of culture that a drug is kind of affiliated to a record you made years ago? <laughs> that must be quite surreal. Really weird, you know. It's a. Uh, that's not the point I was trying to make, I guess. Mm. Let's go fucking mental. Just take <laughs> stuff and run it, you know? Mm. Like, that's just a, a footy, a hooligan chant. Yeah. And I thought it was funny to just rip, set it to a tune and own it. Mm. We'll see how far it travels. Yeah. We got the World Cup coming up. <laughs> it's menacing. I could see it happening. 
Yeah. I don't know. Have you listened to other song? Um, unfortunately, I haven't. No. Like this oh, is the first. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Then why are we talking? No, no, no. I'm talking because I'm very curious oh, about okay. it. Yeah. No, it's a real shame. Like I, I, I unfortunately didn't get a copy in advance, so that's why I'm inquiring now. Oh, so yeah, Jesus. I'm really gutted, but I'm really have pleased. Different questions. This, this record's out of control. I know, but like the good thing is, is that there's enough surrounding it in the way in which it was made for me to to get curious because I, I mean, it's for, all like disco beats and stuff. I took like uh, Michael Jackson Rock with you. Had the, one of the best drummers in the world just play it exactly not sample wow you set up in the studio came back in and just made up my own music on top of these like million sellers like it's beats like that wow what, what made you want to do that why those sort of reference points those are completely different i was thinking in cin cinematic terms terms that, that was an interesting foundation for a, a level and then we just got completely mashed and i made this twisted music on top of it mm. has nothing to do with the way mm. those songs actually are but there's something about the structure of those songs, the sort of like kind of the confidence of the beat of those songs that is just so, you know, you can... You had Quincy Jones is responsible for that more than Michael Jackson. I mean, he's like the shit. <laughs> is it okay that I cussed? Yeah, it's plenty fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, you know, I could find other words, but that, that is an apt description of, of his power, his contribution to... Just, just so you know, Anton, this section's called Real Talk. You can say whatever you fucking like. Have you watched, have you watched that um, R. Kelly Real Talk? Yes. Um, well, the, this section is named after that, that very song. Funny. It's changed you know, that David lives. Chappelle has probably put him up to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there must awesome. be something that's yeah, pushed him in that direction. He, he, unless he's just, you know, I'm like that. I, I, what do you think? What's your take on R. Kelly? All I know is he went to court and he got out of it. That guy's got some power. Yeah, that's true. Your average black man can't get away with, you know, basically racial politics. In America, yeah. with being black, right. you're liable to get arrested. Mm. Kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you know, there's a certain Lemon. amount of that. Like, there's like driving more black or whatever. Yeah, yeah, racial profiling and all this stuff. Um, so, <laughs> that tells you something when these people get away with that kind of stuff because that isn't the common experience. But no, the thing that's also interesting as well is like, obviously you're saying you live in Berlin now, but like making it in Iceland and Berlin, like too culturally... Like, you for don't so even know that there's songs in Russian on this... No, 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 I'm aware about songs in Russian. I'm building up to it, Anton. I'll give it... Yeah, gosh, you're, you're upstaging my moments. This is I, mental. I know, it's a shame I haven't heard it, but, um, you know, I was going to do like a... I was going to ask you to do an impression of each song in a second so we can go to it. <laughs> no, I'm joking, obviously. No, no. No, what I was going to say was, um, like, the good thing about something like Iceland and Berlin as two cultures is that they're such small, insular places, but so many creative and different sort of interesting people and sounds and studios. What was it like being submerged in just those, you know, like, surroundings to, to create the new record? That must have really changed your, your I, I guess, comfort zone, even. Oh, I don't think that I've ever really had a comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, it's wherever you are. You know... I'm very much an independent person, bohemian. I, I make my own culture, mm. you know. It's, it's built with pastiche, you know. I'm borrowing things from, that I like from other things, but it's... Is there anything in that, with that state of mind? Did you absorb anything I from that? I was just laughing today. I was watching, I don't know what it was, one of these, these daytime shows in, in the UK, and, and I was thinking about the, the normal guy who sort of had his hair gel up like this, and then it was frosted a little bit. Just your normal guy that would be on a TV show, a normal bloke. And I was thinking that guy probably would have looked more like a hippie or something in the 60s mm. just to go along with it. And I was thinking about the difference between me and all these people. Like, you see everybody with their spiky hair gel. Yeah. They, they all automatically right now think it's a better idea than just having... Like my hair, I, just, I cut it and it grows out all one length. They think it's like... Uh, a, isn't it bizarre? Mm. That like there's just like... Like, everybody's pushed into this one thing. They think that's a, the best idea, to put a ton of goop in your hair and frost the bits. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I guess at least with long hair or something, it's a natural reaction, isn't it? It's, it's something that your hair is going to do eventually. <laughs> Whereas if you have to affect it to a style that other people are wearing, suddenly the uniqueness and fashion are... Yeah, it's a other. strange, strange world. <laughs> And people forget about the, the 60s. You know, you look at Woodstock and you're like, oh, these masses of the youth culture, everybody's just doing their own thing and grooving. But people forget that, you know, it was like 99% of the people were just, had no opinions and were just follow following the, the trend. Yeah, yeah. And that everybody was just, just, grow your hair into an afro, grow your hair long. So, so I mean, what is the best way in your experience? Because obviously you seem to have found your own. It has to be the best way for me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I guess it should be for everyone else, isn't it? Their own way. But. I think if you're capable, I think there's things that go along with that, that sort of independence. You know, you are on your own then. 
What, what made you feel so sort of comfortable in your own skin and your perspectives, I guess? To... Well, I think it's that I was never comfortable, you know, basically. I can remember when I was a little kid looking at, like, say when I was playing sport as a little kid in school, looking at the picture or something going, that person's handsome and popular. You know, I wet the bed. Like, I could never see myself accurately mm. as being, like, one of the brightest people in California as in my age group, you know, as a student, uh, intellectually, you know, even as a little person. I never saw myself as that way. I saw it as my family, my, my life was a nightmare, and it was a hell, you know, and that I didn't feel comfortable and that I didn't fit in with other people. And that they, everything that they seemed to be excel at effortlessly, the perspective was completely miscued in my head, you know. And then was it? I guess uh, like a lot of people, well, mu music. Because of those great feelings, way. I never thought that I could be adequate in competing or judging myself against them. So I sought to like sort of cultivate my own life and my own creativity. So it wasn't an issue because I wasn't playing that game. I couldn't be compared to it in that way. And it gets strange, you know, I was sitting on EasyJet and there's people my age and they're coming back from their business trips and they're talking about the deal they get about buying a used Mercedes in Germany and bringing it over versus here, a used car here, like value in it. It was just... I grew up in Mercedes. Like people, it's like in, in the Middle East, people drive Mercedes as taxi cabs. It's like the perspective. Mm. But, but status, it just seems so crap. Mm. And especially with the way money's going. When we look at the pound, it's on parity with the euro. Mm. Mm. It's like, why are you even worried about this thing that's depreciating that you're talking This money, it's, it's like so. Mm. It's BS, right? Yeah, it's not the core, is it? It's not the important thing, you know? So. Yeah, and then listening to this this older lady talk about how, what it was like when she was growing up, and how society is now, you know, people saying she's just how it wasn't awful back then. I said, well, it was awful. It's just more awful now, <laughs> you know. Just, but yeah, exactly. It's just yeah, it's been awful, but it's it's really awful now. Yeah, exactly. Our generation, like some of them, will be saying the exact same thing in thirty years, looking back to now. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah, it's just that rose tinted <sighs> nostalgia. Maybe. Yeah. I think it's, it, it does happen, though. It's very cyclical, isn't it? People just think that their era was well, a better one. Carbon credit taxes where they can't even play uh, uh, your, your... Oh, Kelly anymore. having sex with kids and getting away with it, I guess. I mean, you know, it's a dangerous, dangerous world out there. Well, Allegedly. It's, well, uh, he, he's just, like, went beyond the cultural norm. I guess it's no big deal. Well, seriously, yeah. if you look at, like, some Asians here, they've arranged marriages with people that they're, they're six years old, that they're marrying their cousin. You know, like somebody from... Pakistan or something, right? Mm. Not ex executed, not... Uh, but, you know, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and in another culture, maybe it's okay, I guess, when you get through puberty that you're considered an adult, biological. In, it, our, our civilization is a little bit more complex, you know, and, and that's why we wait different ages for different things. You have a little bit of experience you know, to mm. deal with it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We, can, we keep straying, actually, because we, we start on the record, then it goes on to thoughts, generally. But, well, but why would you be talking about the record because you haven't heard it? But, but isn't this a great perspective, though? Like, surely you should be explaining, like, your impetus, and then, you know, I can go into it with an imbibed sensibility, you know, like, have an idea of what your, your manifesto was behind it. That's quite a good thing, isn't it? No? I'm not going to tell you how to do your thing. I'm not, I'm not asking you to. I'm, I'm asking you questions specifically, but I, I was just asking you if you've, you well, felt... Well, you know... I'm, I'm curious about... When you're informed, you can make informed decisions, and that um, even relates to our conversation. That's, that's true, that's true. So, that's basically, enough. you're just cheating yourself. Well, I, I know... Because I'm, this, uh, this, you know, is robbing you of the opportunity to have any... any, any I, I agree. Not, not, a, not to invalidate yeah. this, this conversation, because it's really cool. Mm. But, yeah, I, I agree. You're, real, you're a really personable and uh, gregarious, and I, I'm having a good time talking to you. You're I intelligent, have... and you, you, uh, the best thing that I like about you is... Uh, that you're uh, having fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is great. I mean, I've been a fan for a long time. I, I genuinely am upset that I haven't heard it before. I mean, to be fair, it's not out in the shops till a few weeks away. We so. It's all on the internet as we're making the videos and stuff. That's true. There were always all demos there. and things like that. Yeah, but like, this is the, look, this is the artwork. This is the fake 3D. This That's is Jesus killing Sergeant Pepper, really. possibly. No, Jesus didn't kill Sergeant Pepper. Well, why is this title? Like, come on, like, let's get to the meat of it. Is this a record that has some importance to you at all? Like, referencing it in that vein? Or? 
Uh, Sergeant Pepper could be a metaphor, right? Well, Who was Sergeant Pepper originally? Well, he was obviously a creation, wasn't he? So. A figment of some lame cunt's imagination. <laughs> right? Basically? Oh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. But <laughs> is, it, is it important? <laughs> um, I don't know. If I was a massive, massive Beatles fan, it could be everything to me. Well, okay, no, okay, so here we go. Now, the Beatles, uh, that's, uh, it's generally accepted as the greatest rock record. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not even a rock record, per se. It has something to do with it. Ah, so you are getting at what I thought, which is but the sacred cow that. thing. You're having a oh, swing. Yes. You're having but a swing. Out, on top of that, that's like saying, okay, Coca Cola is the greatest beverage of all time. It is. Better than water? Yes, definitely. Why have, why have water? You can have a Coke. It's got Plants sugar in it. Drink Coke? They Look should... at all the life, life forms and everything. You know, it's Plants whole... don't make, make an honest living. That's the problem. They can't I afford to... a Coke. But what I'm saying is more people drink green tea. Yep. Is green tea greater than Coke? Do you have a problem with people drinking Coke? I tell them it's bad for them, but I enjoy it sometimes too. Mm. It doesn't even matter at a certain point, does it? But we're told that Coke is the greatest beverage. I see what you mean. Okay. So, so is, I, that, is, that, is it because it is the greatest beverage, or is it because of the marketing involved? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I guess it's the way people accrue brands to be lifestyle choices. Well, it's you know? suffocating at a certain, a certain extent, mm. you know? So, so, so the whole... Who... Check it out. Paul McCartney is, with Pixar or whoever, is remaking Yellow Submarine. Why? Is that actually going ahead, is it? That is, in the, they're making it right now. Oh Why God. would you go about doing Him, he's so controlling and such a faker, like, controller <laughs> type guy. Mm. To the point he dyes his hair, right? He controls his image. Mm. He's it's, an old man. It's, it's a shame. Uh, I, I've said it once if before. If you would have said, I own it and I'm going to destroy it, mm. you would have to, like, sit there and go, he does own it. It's, it's down to him. John wouldn't like that, but uh, it's up to him. But that isn't really what he's doing. Why is he saying? What, to bring it to a whole other generation? Why can't people watch? The, that's like a, a landmark moment in animation, taking it out of the cartoon into this animation. Yeah, and the whole point of it was that... For adults, it was to smoke pot and be tripping out, supposedly, but they had very little to do with it other than they just made some songs. You know, Peter Max or whoever was the artist doing it. But why remake it? What a cunt. <laughs> so we've concluded there is a sense of sensationalism in this cover and the album title. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> the, weird, the weird thing, we're talking about it, you know, we're talking about it, and I'm thinking three million people are starving right now immediately in Haiti. That's more than there are Lady Gaga fans. And for the past week, all they've been thinking about besides dead people is trying to eat or drink water. What made you just think about that? What? Because this is just trivial. I mean, basically, it's music. The, the, going back to the beverage thing, it's like, mm. who cares whether I prefer Coca-Cola or, or water? Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, if you're thirsty, drink. If you're dry, you know, drink. Yeah. No, no, that's a fair point. Can we... It boils down to, you know, if you like it. But we can't talk about that because you haven't heard it. Yeah, I... Well, you know what? I feel like I'm getting quite accustomed. I've already got a very strong sensibility. I know that there's a rip-off of a drum beat from an old Quincy Jones produced record. That's a good Not song. A rip-off. Well, okay, though. it's based on. It was an inspiration. Let's. Okay, can but take you that can't cover. take the piss out of me for that because of Will I Am bring the beat now? Do you think he made up that 808 jam? No. No, he didn't, did he? <laughs> It has nothing to do with anything. Oh, in fact, our whole culture has nothing to do with anything. It's references. Like, it's, it's all references. It's fine. It's not a problem. I wasn't dissing that at all. Dream a dream. <laughs> yep. But uh, what I was also going to go on to as well is like, the collaborators and stuff as well. Like, you, you change the lineup as, as quite often ever uh, on this record as well. Like, a lot of different people. People don't understand because I didn't call the project the Anton Newcomb or Anton. Like Beck called it Beck. How many people has Beck play, played with? Whoever He's played he wants with to. Yeah. zillions, yeah, yeah. loads. Yeah. It's the same thing. I just never really wanted to call it just me. Well, why is that? Do you think? Because when it is effectively I, I you. Think it goes back to me wedding the bed or something, and what we talked about me making my whole life and my self confidence. I don't think I'm that that important. I know that I'm different, but so is everybody else. It's nice to have a moniker as well because like it slightly dissociates yourself as well because you can do more within it. You can change it. You can contort it. Whereas if it's Anton Newcomb and you did like a I don't know a certain type of stark or stripped down record, suddenly people think of you as singer songwriter or whatever. You know, it's just well, you can do. More. I am a singer songwriter, but I I was just talking to McGee about this stuff, I look at it like I'm doing audio sculpture and architecture. 
I'm playing a studio. I always have been, as far as the recorded thing. Thing, you know, I was in a movie, and there, there's that aspect of it. Well, also, how do you feel I when you stand up with my friends in a band and play live? But I make everything up, I play it. How do you feel when you look back to that film now, like years on and stuff as well? I usually don't think about it very much. Because yeah. obviously it was, so, it was such an, a massive point and it, like a lot of an entrance point for people to discover your music as well. But how do we know Jedward's, who Jedward is? <sighs> so it's the same thing. Well, I don't know. Except the difference is I actually have ideas. I have skills too, you know, and... Um, I think they've taken the art of being an absolute annoying pair of bastards to a new, new level. Are they or Simon Kelling doing it? I think they're doing it themselves. No. He's the one that took them on. No, it was the, other, the Irish guy, wasn't it? Was it, who, was it the it's Irish his, guy? The whole show is his baby anyways. Yeah. He just didn't personally want to manage him. <laughs> or some shit. Would you manage Jedward? You know... What the, would you do with him? No. I, I don't think I would. Fair conclusion. Um, um, well, I know I haven't heard this record, and please don't berate me for this anymore, because I'm going to take this home, and I'm going to put it, well, actually go straight back to the office and put it on, and I, I might even overdub some of my reactions on, really, to the record. I, I can email them to you as well, and we could like, follow this up on an email or something. Have but, you ever seen the, the girl um, from South Africa who does all the YouTubes, and she's like... <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen her on YouTube? The South African, she does the trance, she's like... Okay, we're going to talk to Alistair Crowley. And she goes, Hello, I'm Alistair Crowley here. And, and any subject that you, that's esoteric that you ever thought of, Jim Morrison or Adolf Hitler, she channels them. <laughs> and then she's arguing 24 hours a day on the internet, and there's a million of these UFOs, any kind of thing you can possibly think of. She's got a video where she's like <laughs> channeling this, like, Antlantean uh, being. Uh, from, you know what I'm talking about? Kind of like like Xenu, kind of like the, that whole like, do you know what I'm talking about? No, it's really interesting. She's got blonde hair, real short, and she's crazier than shit, and she's got these fire eyes. Um, and she's so crazy that I'm sexually attracted to her. Wow, yeah. But terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a sexy terror. It's nuts, and I'm like, I'm like sexually attracted to fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, don't put your knob in fire, Anton. Exactly. I've tried. It's but, not you, but you know what I'm talking about? It's like, yeah. I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. I kind of like her. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. I have a wife. I mean, and she's lovely. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I hope she's not burning your house down right now because that would be a pain. That would be a pain. We were just more interested in getting really, really mashed out, you know? <laughs> Basically, making this really freaky music like I personally read Masonic books and I've read all the Thelma stuff you know the, the Crowley stuff and what, what, what do you get out of that incidentally I just read uh, it's, it's obvious to me that people the sacred geometry and all the Kabbalistic stuff mm. it's in the architecture in London it's everywhere it's on the money it's everywhere it's not a joke that so I'm just interested in the geometry of it I personally don't I'm not compelled to do spells or rituals. Right. I'm not interested in it at all. I guess Motley Crue did all that, didn't they? they well, you can. I there. mean, that stuff's there, right? If you look into esoteric knowledge, right? Mm. But uh, I personally don't dabble in magic that way, mm. but do magic. My, my, like, this is a slightly a tangent, but my dad once, um, uh, he once uh, basically did the Ouija board thing, yeah. and um, uh, it said to him, don't turn up to work tomorrow, the next day. And he was like, why? And they were like, just trust us. And, and then it stopped working. And so my dad was really freaked out. So he didn't go to work on the trains. Um, and the train he would have got on that day actually crashed. And uh, everyone on it died. So uh, that's pretty fucking weird, isn't it? Probably, don't, and probably worth not doing that stuff. I you? often, uh, you know, I've toyed with the idea of you know, having kids and you could just tell them all kinds of weird things. <laughs> Little stories like well, that. You're, so you're just saying that it's not true? I don't know if it's true. I think that's you're, very, you're now sceptical. You, you, read, you read these shamanic, shamanic, I can't even pronounce it anymore. Like, sh the shaman, they were, yeah. So we were doing a lot of experimenting with the, with the record, kind mm. of. The recording processes in Iceland. And then, yeah. Mm. Really interesting. It's, I mean, it's heavy. Like, some of the songs, when they end, if you, uh, if you accept, like, there's a heavy metal song, basically, on here, like, 
the thong ni for means heavy knife. I'd never attempt it. It's not like big rock star stuff has never been my thing. Um, I just did it because somebody asked me to in the studio, <laughs> and I made it up my version of something. That's fun though, isn't it? Sometimes fun just having that kind of abandoned like. I kind of wanted to make a party record. A little bit. Is this just going to work in a party context, do you think? Or? One of the songs is Let's Go Fucking Mental. It is out of control. <coughs> I can't believe that you haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah no, I'm very excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on and brighten up my Wednesday, I think, after this. So. I should just like whip out my laptop. You should press pause for one minute. I'll st- you can watch. Can we quickly do that? You can watch a quick. Let's, let's do that. I think we should do that. Uh, Don't you Iceland's love derpy and all this stuff? Do you use the derpy? Yeah. You know what derpy is? You know, you can just put the URL. Uh, there's lots of these sites, but you put the URL to any YouTube and get the MP3 or the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so great. Brilliant. So what I want to do on the view is go to full screen. Wait, enter full screen. Okay, and then we're going to go down here. Okay, is it going? Volume? Cool. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so now play, right? Uh, is, it, is it playing? Uh, not yet, no. More audio, I think, can happen. Yeah, that's cool. At the end, is it? Yeah, basically. Amazing. You get to see the end. That is awesome. That is fucking great. That's what, like really industrial groove as well. Like music. Kind of, huh? Yeah, totally. Like really electronic industrial. That's really nice. But like it's really sparse as well. Amazing. Good work.